And so what breathwork in itself is, it's the number one somatic healing modality in the world because you don't need anything to do breathwork. You don't even need a facilitator to like lead you in because what it awakens in your body is what it's meant to awaken in your body. It's very unique mm. to you. So you can do all the healing you want on like journaling and paper. You can do talk therapy to like help you, you know, parse out things, but there's still information in the somatic body, the energetics of information that live in the molecule of your body in the water of your body and this is new information we're learning that there's in, there's like memory in water and you're 80 percent water and so you're holding like a lot of stuff yeah. that's not even yours it might be from like a past life it might be from your ancestors so you're waking a lot of stuff a lot of stories that you get to heal through that you don't necessarily get to heal through in very traditional models of breath work and very traditional models of uh, therapy. It's a blend of all those worlds. And at the same time, while we're breathing in this way, which is this three part breath, you're breathing into your mouth the whole time. And there's variations of it where you're breathing in through the nose and they all do different things, um, which oftentimes is not taught. It, it, it actually does very different things in the way your nervous system is activated and your endocrine system is activated. And so essentially when you're doing this breath, you're awakening all these neurons and information in your gut. And in the back in the day, we used to only think that neurons were created in your brain, neurology, neurons, we call them neurons for that reason. But it turns out that your gut actually has a whole different set of neurons that talk to each other in a completely different way than the ones in your brain. So yeah. like, and you know that kind of, cause you get that gut feeling, you get that intuition, you know, that like feeling in the pit of your stomach, that butterflies in your stomach, but you didn't really know how to like verbalize that you didn't know how to articulate that you kind of just like knew it in your body so when we're moving in this way we're actually accessing this second brain that we have this like whole different arena that we have and now we're also learning there's a third set of neurons in your heart uh, and the harvard heart health math um, institute there is they're studying all of this stuff right now so it's in the next five ten years we're gonna have like way more you know sciencey stuff to talk about that and, yay <laughs> and so in the heart there's a third set of neurons and there's overlap between all these places. There's a third way these neurons actually talk to each other. And they're kind of like this, they're like nodes, they're more flowy. They're not firing like the ones in our brain, which are binary. So the ones in our brain fire like yes or no, black or white, zero or one. It's a very like computerized, linear, logical, systematic way of thinking and processing information, which is great and amazing. We love our brain neurons, but then in your gut, you have these like more intuitive neurons. In your heart and you low-key know that too because in your heart you're just like oh my head said yes but my heart said no <laughs> you know, like we have this like linguistic in there and we also mm. understand that these neurons aren't always like talking to each other or they don't have coherence within each other with with each other they're all sometimes at dissonance meaning that they're your heart is saying one thing but your gut is saying something else your brain logically da, 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 and they seem like three different brains but when you're doing this three-part breath and you're moving your body you're actually sending all this information and allowing it to connect in a circular energy so your brain now gets to connect to the information in your gut and gets to connect to the information in your heart and vice versa in all in all sense of that direction and so in this process it i call this flow because like that's actually where you get to you get to that flow state where you're not disconnected where you're not just fragments of yourself you're not just fragments of your head and your heart and your body and your gut and your thoughts and your experience you're just this one person like you're in this one integrated vessel. yeah you're integrated right like you're in this one vessel and at the same time what flows through you like a river is the emotions, the energy in motion. And you also low-key understand that you process emotions in your body too. Like when you have that heaviness on your shoulder, it's not at your elbow, it's at your shoulder. When you have that heartache, you know, culturally, regardless of what language you speak, what gender, sex, creed, universe you're in, heartache is processed at the center of your heart, not at the left of your spine where your actual anatomical heart is, but at the center of your spine, universally that's where it's processed. You get that gut feeling, it's in your stomach. You get that, you get that heat when it's, when it's passion, when you get that uh, intense emotion, the anger burning in, uh, in passion, burning anger, heated, steaming mad. You see the cartoons that has like the steam coming out. We also have clues in our body that are the, uh, the cold temperature, which are more like avoidant. So when you feel like cold things coming through, it's like that avoidant emotion, like the ice queen, the icy, the mean girls are like the very cold shoulder. You know, it's like, oh, that was cold blooded. Like how you hurt me like that, right? Like it was like, so 
so cold that, that you kind of linguistically already have these phases, phrases in your language. You linguistically kind of look, you understand that. But when we're doing flow breath work, we're putting it all into one, that the, these emotions that are holding onto your shoulders, this burden that you're hanging on in your shoulder, as soon as you have that uncomfortable conversation or you go do that uncomfortable thing or you send that email, you're like, ah, oh, weight's been lifted off. It has this process that it has the ability to flow through. And I always describe this energy as like a river, right? Like we have all these different energy centers in our body. We actually have hundreds of different energy centers, but we, uh, in, in modern culture, we talk about the seven main ones. You might have heard of them called chakras or chakras, and they're basically energy discs. And the way that I describe that is you have these energies spinning through your body all day long. They're never blocked. You know, they're, they're, there's no blockages in a chakra. There's no, they're, they're flowing like an endless river. So you have this river, it's flowing, flowing, flowing. And sometimes a big thing falls into the center of your river. And sometimes that big thing is like a big ass tree, like a pandemic or like a breakup or something that happened in your life. And you're just like, oh shit, like something's in the center of my river. But that flow of water didn't ever stop. That flow is still going. It's still going from point A to B. It's just gonna have to figure out a different way to go through. It's gonna go under this tree. It's gonna go over this three. It's gonna try start to cut uh, uh, through this three tree eventually. It's gonna go around it. It's gonna find its way to finagle around this like big tree. And the thing is like, we're it, it's really obvious when big things happen in our lives, like a big trauma or a big thing that we can see. But what's even sneakier for us is when it's little things that happen, like a leaf that falls into the river, which might be, you know, you not being able to speak up because like somebody always speaks up over you at work or they always like tell you, you don't know what you're talking about. And, and it's just one leaf. And so you're like, oh, that was annoying. And I don't feel like advocating for myself. But like over time, a bunch of leaves keep collecting in that river. So one leaf was not dangerous for you. But over time, you've collected a bunch of patches of leaves that are sitting in this river that are actually in the path of this flowing water. And these are sneaky because that can manifest as uh, 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 a stagnant energy in your throat because you weren't speaking up so now that sits in your throat and so here maybe you're manifesting you've manifested an illness like a thyroid problem or uh, a sore throat or some a cough that won't go away something that is like always there but you just don't have something to attribute it to you might have you know that pain on your shoulders that leaf pile that's on your shoulder because maybe you're like in a dynamic with a friend or a relationship or a partnership or uh, or a job that doesn't necessarily feel like it's serving you, but you haven't done anything about it. It's like this leaf pile that's collected over time. So what happens during flow breath work is like, it's the river cleanup. Like we're cleaning up all this stuff. I love that. <laughs> it's the cleanup process It's like, let's go, you know, and sometimes it's like, all you have to do is just kick that tree, just a little, just nudge it a little bit. And it's going to flow by itself down that river. You don't have to actually go with a, you know, like a whole like uh, tree cleaning up crew and you know spend 10 years cleaning up this tree it looks really big but sometimes you just finagle it a little bit and the and the river current will just carry it through it will disintegrate down the line it will find some beavers for it to take care of it later down the line right like you worry about it over there and but the thing is when it's sitting there we don't actually understand that it's sitting there because logistically you know we see that yeah there's this heartbreak there's this trauma there's this big tree but these little things that have collected over time, our childhood stuff, our limiting beliefs, all the different things in our subconscious, all the ways that, you know, we, we learn protective behaviors, the way that we learned avoidance, the way that we learned to disrespect ourselves, the way we didn't learn how to set boundaries, blah, 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 all these different things collect. And it's like, they don't actually have to stay here. And it would take forever to go and be like, okay, what is this leaf? And what is this leaf? And what we can do that if you want to spend the time and just like really go through that process. Absolutely. But sometimes you can just go and be like, yep, scoop up that entire pile and be like, do I need this rotten leaf? No, I don't. And then you go to the next part of your part of your pathway and you see like other pockets of things that have collected. So what flow breath work does, it helps you just do that on the subconscious 
subconscious level and on the somatic level. So you don't actually have to think about where that leaf pile is. And maybe you intuitively know where that is because you know you feel that on your shoulder, you feel that in your gut, you feel that in your stomach. Like you feel that, you intuitively might already like know that. And my guess is like you kind of know, know that, but you might also be surprised that like, wow, all these things, all the ways that I show up in my life is actually really based on the pain that I'm carrying from like my dad or my mom or this like relationship that I thought I was over and like you know your hashtag girl boss attitude of you is just like I'm over it like that doesn't phase me but it's still living in your river for some reason it still has permission to stay there so this flow is allowing you to bring back the flow in your river bring that back the flow in your energy and you're moving through that so you actually give yourself permission to feel instead of you know controlling instead of forcing yourself to do it in an incredibly masculine or assertive way you're blending that uh, that masculine energy of like yeah there is a specific way you're doing this breath work and there's a softness a gentleness a move an ease a sensuality a yin that feminine energy too Thanks for watching, you guys. If you enjoyed this, click here to check out the full podcast episode. Click here to check out our full library of podcast episodes. And don't forget to hit subscribe so you can be the first to know when we're posting new ones. I'll see you soon.